now from the New Testament, a reading of 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 7 to 15. You excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in the love that we have kindled in you. See that you also excel in this grace of giving. I am not commanding you, but I do want, I do want to test the sincerity of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others. You know that the grace of our Lord Jesus Though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. And here is my judgment about what is best for you in this matter. Last year, you were the first not only to give, but also to have the desire to do so. Now finish the work, so that your eager willingness to do it may be matched by your completion of it, according to your means. For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. Our desire is not that others might be relieved while you are hard pressed, but that there might be equality. At the present time, your plenty will supply what they need so that in turn, their plenty will supply what you need. The goal is equality, as it is written, the one who gathered much did not have too much, and the one who gathered little did not have too little. Here ends the reading today. For me, it has never been more relevant or helpful to hear the words of another Christian community trying to hold it together, <laughs> individually, collectively, in times of stress, than it does today. How many of you have caught yourself this week, last week, holding your breath? Paul tells Corinth a story about another church community the church community in Macedonia. He uses this story of God's blessing on their lives when they were feeling most desperate. I am thankful today for this word because I need it to work in my life, and you do too. I think you do too. It comes to me today and yesterday as a reflection of my own thoughts, a response to a prayer that I've been saying to myself and I think that you have said to yourself over the last few days and weeks. And so what is Paul's word? Be generous in all things. When we're asking ourselves, what do we do now? Be generous in all things and trust. God, I don't know which way to go trust comes as the answer. Trust that when you reach out in love, there will be someone else reaching back. Hold on, is that for real God? Right? Right? Is that for real God? Because that's been put to the test this week. Right? I think it's for real. We know this, don't we? We know this. We know. Through the songs that we have sung and the prayers that we've shared, we have acknowledged we are not alone. We are not alone. All things are connected. We know that we are whimsical and wondering and wandering and wonderful worrywarts. Sorry, Judy, I added a verse. <laughs> worrywarts, you made a salad. It's true for me. I don't know what to say. All right. We know the work ahead. We excel in rising to the challenge, giving of ourselves completely. We know that love must be the guide in all things at all times. You know that your survival, your freedom is tied and connected to mine and to our sisters of color and our immigrant brothers. And that the only way to freedom and peace is together. We know this. But we know this too. So many directions, so little time and no dinner on the table yet, and fear of the unknown. And my God, they are powerful and cruel. But none of those messages, 
are, can compare to the gems that you might tell yourself, right? That you're pretty sure someone else can do the work better, smarter, more efficient, with more eloquence, precision, less fear than you. And praying for that person to show up may be a better use of your time and gifts. Wrong. False. The offering is acceptable according to what one has, not what one does not have. It's very difficult to live in that place, that place of trust. You can feel hard pressed, says Paul, squeezed. And I know that today that place of trust is eroded in a lot of areas. Or when any one of you is feeling hurt, right? Just for yourself in your personal life, we tend to withdraw and not ask for that help to compose ourselves and return to community. What Paul is suggesting is that we practice that reaching out even when our brains are telling us to withdraw. Even when we're sure it's not okay someone will be there. Today, more than ever, we have to double down on God's promises, on the way that we've been taught to be and to believe it and to practice it. Have you ever heard this saying, if you can walk, you can dance, and if you can talk, you can sing? It's an African proverb, and it was the first poster that I bought as an ordained clergywoman and put on my wall right in my first office at UC Santa Cruz. It hangs in my office here in Eugene. It irritates a lot of people when they see it. Uh-uh, right? It, comes, it can come as a joke, right? Like, <laughs> you don't mean me. No, you shouldn't have me sing, or frustration or whatever, however it comes out, what I hear, right, is the pain of some voice who has told you you cannot or should not, and that voice might be you, and God forbid it was your choir teacher. I know that happened too, <laughs> right? Dancing is worse. Who's gonna come up here? Show me how it's done, right? You've never been more glued to your seats, right? I know there's a few. Leanne, I'm sure Leanne would get up here and dance with me. That's fine, that's fine. You don't want to sing here, you don't want to dance here, it's all right. I'm telling you though, it only appears to get harder from there. Who's ready to lead a change in public policy? Let me see those hands. Yes, we need you. Yes, amen. Who's ready to run for president? Lord have mercy, we need you, girl. Go on, Hannah, yeah, right? I do believe there are many gifts and one spirit, and that everyone should work to identify their gifts and use them to the best of their ability, thereby making the body whole and more complete and functioning. But there is something here in this message, more than we can imagine, because we've built a world around ourselves that tells us, just find your niche and do that. But you and I both know that this world today needs more than that. We've got to cross train, mm, right? We've got to build the trust back again, piece by piece. You're starting to feel that squeeze, but look, the goal is equality, right? It says, verse 14 and 15, your plenty will supply their need and their plenty will supply your need. And as it is written, the one who gathered much did not have too much and the one who gathered little did not have too little. These are the words of Moses to the Hebrew exiles from Exodus 16 on how to make it through the desert. These are the days that we too rely upon those promises, those ancient prayers of Paul and Moses and Jesus. These are the days when we will look back and say, God carried us through, but I don't know how, but yet here I am. God's power is at work among the people and God's power is multiplied through communion with one another. This is the hard work for each of us to reach out for the help that we need, to step out without a full and complete understanding and find a way forward, come together as family, as spouses, as church committee, as board, as congregation, as Congress for the well-being of us all. 
It's hard work, but there are examples all around us. Look to the witness of those 600 women in D.C. singing and chanting. Oh my goodness, the spirit at work. Look to the children of Standing Rock and Parkland, Florida, hosting town hall meetings together. They can't even vote, and they are at work, right? Look to the work of Peace Village right in our own backyard. This is a program at First Congregational Church that over the summer they bring together interfaith leaders and inter interdisciplinary, excuse me, approaches to peacemaking. So children in our church and in all other faith communities were learning nonviolent conflict resolution this week. Amazing. They were learning games that were formerly competitive in their school and finding a way to make them cooperative. They were learning each other's sacred songs, eating each other's favorite foods, reading from each other's sacred texts. Look to the child who was leading the chanting yesterday at the Families Belong Together rally. Were you there? He was seven or something? I mean, he was little and he was bringing us all into a voice and in unity. The scariest thing we can do sometimes is reach out, but it's the best thing that we can do. We can't get sick of each other, we can't turn away from each other, we need each other. So what is the best thing that we can do today? Practice. Today, we practice. And tomorrow, we practice. Today we pray, tomorrow we pray. John Wesley, what did he say? Do what you can, while you can, with all you can, right? I will walk, I will fight, I will strive in the name of love. Mine come out in songs. I will speak, I will shout, I will sing to the skies above. It looks like it might be a long road And I'm gonna walk it with you Say it like John Wesley, say it like that song Say it like my buddy Chris when we're planning worship this week He says, yeah man, the song goes on Take your breath, we'll sing your part for you You jump right back into the song It just keeps going Today, tomorrow, every day we practice speaking, using our voices. Today, we're gonna practice listening and taking turns, right? And encouraging one another. And then, if we get through that good stuff, there's even more that we can do. We're gonna come to the table first. We're always gonna come to God first. First, to recovenant with God, to recommit. Remember, this is our daily bread that we take. This is our daily work that we do, remembering God as the primary relationship and coming up and being together with God. And after we have communion, then we'll get into small groups and we will work together. We are called to take care of this world, so let us take care of this world. It is a gift to us. We are called to find love in all people. May we find love in all people and let us share it. Let us make peace unconditionally because life depends upon it, all life. And may you each find your way today to be a blessing and receive the blessing. Amen.